Welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at how to make a divided bar chart in Excel. The divided bar chart is another chart that lets us represent parts of a whole. And for this, we're going to return to our census data where we looked at the cohort of students who had graduated high school and then gone on to either not earn a degree or earn some sort of degree. And because all of these people belong to a whole of those who have graduated high school, that allows us to use part to hold pretty naturally to represent that data. So this is a similar idea to using a pie chart. It's a little bit different, the divided bar chart. It has strengths and weaknesses, which we'll discuss elsewhere relative to the pie chart. But knowing how to use at least pie charts and divided bar charts will let you choose between the two of those when you're seeking out the strengths of one versus the other. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at our data. We're back here where we have processed or worked up the data from the census and we had the degrees post high school for people, for the fraction of people that went on and the percent. Doing a pie chart, we used fraction, since we're using something else, we can use percentage or people. It will all look the same either way, but let's just work with percentage since we calculated it. If we want to plot the percentage, again, we just highlight the numbers we want to plot. We don't need the 100%. We're interested in the fractions of that 100% or the percentages of that 100%. Again, you can select this as the header or not. We'll probably change it later. I'm in the habit of selecting the header that names the column. We want to insert into this sheet our divided bar chart. And so we go to the insert part of this ribbon, and then we're going to go ahead and insert a bar chart. Excel calls it column because it makes a distinction between vertical bar charts, which it calls column charts, and horizontal ones, which it calls bar. We're not going to make that distinction in this course. We have bar charts, either vertical or horizontal are the same. We want a divided bar chart. Excel calls divided bar charts stacked bar charts. Also, fine, we will continue to call them divided bar charts here. And then we click on it. One thing you'll see is that it does not give us what we want. This is not really representing parts of a whole. Instead, it's giving us just a straight up bar chart. And that's because Excel is trying to be just a little too clever in deciding what it is that we want. Even though we said we wanted a stacked chart, its default for processing the data that we have here is to not give us a stacked or divided bar chart. To do so, we need to go into select data. So with the chart selected, meaning we've clicked onto it, we can then right click and go down to select data. You can see here that we have the Y values are where we want them. They're here. These are what we're trying to plot. The issue is that it's grouped them all together as a percentage. And we don't want that. Instead, we want to switch our row and column. This will give us what we want. By doing so, it gives us series one, two, three, four, and five, which are these five different numbers here. If I say okay, you'll see we now have a divided bar chart. This is what we want. I'm gonna go ahead and resize this a little bit. We don't need it to be quite so tall. All the information is along the length of this chart. If you had plotted it vertically, then it would be along the height of the chart. What we have then is the name percentage. That's not really what we're plotting though. And so we need to make some changes to what's going on here. Let's go ahead and go back to select data. It's telling us percentage, and that's because we have percentage select here. I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of that. So instead of giving us a percentage, is the name, which is this horizontal category axis label. I'm going to say that the horizontal category axis label is equal to the column here, degrees post high school. When I'm done, I can either hit return or I can click this button here. That brings us back to this window. If I say okay, then I have degrees post high school. I can think about what else I might want to change here. And to do that, again, we just simply make sure that we have selected this chart. And when we do so, we have a new chart design section in this ribbon. And we can add and remove chart elements if we want. We can add axes, we can add titles. Um, the primary horizontal axis, I think rather than being on the left, could be maybe um, at the top, that would be this axis title. It's not quite doing what we want. 
we would like to have, there I just deleted it, we would like to have this somewhere else. And it's difficult to know how to move it. So instead, we'll simply delete it because I don't want it over there. Instead, I'll go back to the chart design and say title. We're gonna add in the primary title. It says access title. If I wanna change it, I can just go in and type what I want. So how about this is degrees post high school. You can see that these all stack up to 100% as shown here. That's because we're adding up these percentages. Because we're implying that this is parts of a whole though, I don't really need this to say 100%. That's information we already have. And I also don't need this axis to extend to 120%. I really just want to see the data. And so I want to adjust this axis so that it runs from zero to 100 and that's it. I'm gonna double click and when I do so, it will bring up axis options. So I double clicked on the numbers that brings up axis options. The minimum zero, that makes sense. I said the maximum, it doesn't need to go to 120. Let's just move it to 100. I hit return and now the axis is resized to run just simply from zero to 100. Let's go back again. It has a vertical alignment, that's fine. The text direction is horizontal, that's fine. What else can we change about this? We can change something like the fill. We can change something like the lines. Right now we have these gray lines. These lines could be red if we wanted them to, but I don't think we really want any particular lines on this axis. I'm not sure that it does us any good. And so what I'm gonna do actually is set this to no line. I also don't really need this vertical line here, what they call grid lines. I'm gonna double click on those and then say, I also want no line there. I also don't really need these numbers here. And if I click on those, you can see that like, I could maybe find me a way that I could have access options. You know, do I want to have something to do with this labels, label position, next axis, high, low, let's say none, that gets rid of the numbers. And now I just have a simple bar chart. What I'm missing, of course, is like what the labels are. I can do that back under, now you can see what it's done is put in the values for each one of these, which is maybe what we want. But I think instead of data labels, what we really want is something to do with a legend. We'd like to label what each one of these is. And so here's legend, none, right, top, left, bottom, top. This gives us the series one, two, three, four, and five. Again, that's not quite what we want. We don't want just numbers associated with each one of these. We'd like these names. And there's a couple different ways to do this. One would be to go to select data. And you can see that it's saying series one, two, three, four, and five, because that's the name of these. So how about instead of series one, I say the name is none. Instead of series two, I say the name is associates degree. And you can see the pattern that we're doing here. Instead of this, it's bachelor's. Instead of this, it's gonna be master's. And then we have the last one to do. Okay, and now we have the correct names. If we wanted to try to figure out whether we could put them inside, we can use the quick layout and look around and see. Here's options where we can kind of see text is inside the bars, so let's try some of those. This one only puts the values inside the bars. We decided that's not what we wanted. What about this one? That puts the names and the values. Not quite what we want. Can we find one that's just names? And we may not be able to in this particular version of Excel, which is maybe one of the drawbacks. And so if this is something that we think is acceptable, then I could always go in individually and delete the number after the fact. And that gives me just the name without the value. You may decide that you like the value, but again, we can always go in and just adjust things separately after the fact. And so this is how we can go in and we can get things to look maybe how we want it to look. One thing you'll notice is that professional PhD is too long. It doesn't really fit. What if we had made this a vertical bar chart instead? And that's something that we can do if we want. If I click on this chart and make sure it is under the chart design, 
I can say, oh, I should have made it vertical. So instead of column, it should have been stack column vertical. And now if I resize this, I can make it such that the, all the font and names fit within this bar. I'm going to actually make them a little bit bigger. Click on one of these. I'm going to say, I would like this to be maybe 18 point. You can see it's like a little narrow. So then it made this like two line thing. I could click on this, make it wider if I want, and then go down and do the same thing for each one of these, which is, I think, a little annoying. And in future software that we'll use in this course that we are gonna be exposed to, we'll see that it might be a little bit easier to really modify things how we want them not using Excel, but using some of these other things. And of course, there's also this comma that's present and we'd have to go in and we'd have to also then get rid of the comma one by one just by coming in and selecting the text. We're clicking on the box, we're clicking again, we're clicking again to get this. And we go up and do that for all of them. We're not gonna do it because I don't think you need to watch that. We don't need the axis title maybe anymore. We have a chart title. This chart title's maybe what we wanted, degrees, post high school that's nice maybe we should make this at least as big as all our category labels we don't need this title down here and so let's just go ahead and delete each one of these and make things as clean as we possibly can and now again we have a visualization where we have all the categories labeled inside the bars instead of using a legend which i personally prefer and we have it run vertically so that we can fit all the text inside of here if we want. And I think it looks reasonably okay. We have the same tricks for how we can change the individual colors the end of, the, of the text of each one of these things as we did with the pie chart. For instance, if I wanted to change this from this green to something else, I can double click on the particular part of the bar chart. I want to edit, go to fill, and then I can say, oh, this should have been like red. Oh, that is too painful to look at. We can't leave that. Maybe yellow. And so it's similar to the same ideas we had with pie charts. Um, go ahead and explore. See what sort of design criteria you like. Again, we're not trying to make the most beautiful plots here. We're simply seeing how one makes these bar charts and sort of what options are available to you in order to make this. Just as we did with the pie chart, we can go ahead and we can save it by just selecting the entire chart and then say save as picture. Then we export this as stacked um, bar. This is going to my desktop. If I go ahead and open that, again, it'll be too large, but we can resize it so you can see it. And this is the final part. All right, so now you have the ability to make a stacked or divided bar chart in order to represent parts of a whole. Have some fun with that and I look forward to seeing what you all create.